Hi, my name is Taryn King. I'm director of product for SMB Media Labs into its new media network. Hi, I'm Tara Loftus, global president of skincare at Galderma and the global head of CDFL skincare. Tara, uh, really excited to talk to you, especially with a you know spot like this. You know, when do you get a better chance to have an interview like this? Um, to start us off, I want to understand a little bit about your role, and then after that, I'd love to understand a little bit about Galderma's strategy for this year, especially given trends in the market and, and you know where everything is headed at this point. Definitely. So my my role is really primarily focused on Cetaphil, this iconic brand that's that has you know been around for 76 years. Right. You and I are both Americans, right? So we we know that everyone in America, I feel like, has Cetaphil in their bathroom. It's this iconic brand, and so my my goal and my role both are really fixated on evolving this iconic brand that is so loved by consumers and dermatologists and sometimes these brands that have been present for many years it's it's really scary to touch them for a lot of marketers because what's worked in built heritage you know you don't you don't want to touch it at a certain point I'm not afraid to touch brands I think it's really important to evolve it to move at the speed of culture to show up for the consumer where and and, who, and determine who you want your consumer to be you can't be everything to everyone. And so, I mean, what I'm most excited about in my role is taking this iconic brand yeah. and reimagining it okay. for, for the future. Sure. And then Galderma is really, you know, the world's most trusted dermatology company. And so I have all of the science and expertise at my fingertips. Our CEO himself is a physician. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Fleming Orenskopf, he's this incredible visionary leader. And so I'm surrounded by real science and how incredible, right? Because so many skincare brands rely fully on labs that are that are external partners. Yeah. The science is with us. So I'm really taking my time for me, taking mm -hmm. time, like six months is taking a lot of time oh, yeah. to, to understand the consumer, understand what they want, understand the market and how we can differentiate within the white space that exists. And then and, and then working on a rebrand. That's awesome. You, you had mentioned something around uh, right message at the right time and not being able to hit everyone with everything. When you think about uh, campaigns in particular, you guys had a, a campaign, I think it was in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. Um, hopefully I'm correct there, the, the Face Anything campaign. Campaigns like this, is the messaging very broad or do you, do you seek a niche audience for it? And how do you kind of think about the targeting of reaching those, those specific consumers with the right messaging? You know, I think previously, before I had arrived, there had been a lot of uh, localized campaigns that were designed in region to target local consumers. Okay. And I'm a huge fan of localized marketing yeah. because it's so important to speak to the consumers in a way that creates local affinity and fanatic, you know, fanaticism. What I'm trying to do now is, is more or less assess and tap into the global macro trends and the global insights and let that inform the campaigns that are coming next. So, you know, our two of our biggest markets are, um, are Asia and uh, in the U.S., um, but we also Latin America is huge for us. And so I'm constantly really, you know, mining social media to understand what's happening, what's hot, what's trending on Netflix at the moment, who's who's trending on TikTok, who's the up and coming singer or celebrity, and do we want to work with this person? Do we want to create a viral piece of content for it? Yeah. So I, I come from this school of thought that's, you know, pretty, with a lot of conviction, honestly, that you almost can never win with media dollars, but you can win with creativity. Uh, okay. And so for me, but but to be creative and to be successful, you have to tap into a culturally relevant moment. 
interesting. You um, you talk about you know who, what's trending with the finger on the pulse. I, I, I did have a question, which I think leads to this uh, quite nicely around how do you meet the changes of the market? And I know you, you've been in your role for about six months now, and you're you're feeling as as one does in the early days. It, it, it feels like that might be one of the, the the challenges to face around the social media era that we're obviously way into now at this point. The influencer side of things, it, it feels like that is uh, something that is like a shift forward for a brand that's been around, as you mentioned, for a very long time. Yeah. Into them. Yeah, totally. What's so interesting is, is like you said, we've had these regional campaigns that have been very successful. And so diving in at Cetaphil, I speak to our team in China. And they've always been, you know, very digital first and advocacy minded because you can't be a skincare or beauty brand in China right. and survive <laughs> without being digitally first, right? That said, not every market is. And so you're right, you know, on a macro level, there's a lot of shifting that I that I'm focused on and, and some and some love and encouragement that I'm giving the regions to ensure them that you know to be to be digital first and to be influencer first, it doesn't come at the expense of love of dermatologists. And what I from what I can tell, some of the most impactful influencers are dermatologists. And and so I think you know where we're headed now is looking at cultural moments that are relevant, knowing who our new consumer is going to be. So we've we've made that executive decision to pursue Gen Z as our primary target. So once you determine who that is, knowing that we want to halo into Gen Alpha and and, and up to millennials, and, and that ultimately we don't want to alienate anyone, right? Yeah. But making that decision to focus on Gen Z while appealing to Alpha and millennial secondarily makes it it makes everything more consistent. You know, I spent the last 10 years at LVMH and I believe, you know, working at LVMH gives you a masterclass in how to build a hype machine. And so Cetaphil is loved and trusted, yeah. but but in turn, but I am laser fixated on building relevance and evolving it into the future. And part of that is making those decisions. Who do you want to associate your brand with? Like who do we, who do we want to gift product to? Who do what do we want to look like at, on shelf online? And ultimately coming to the conclusion through a lot of data and insights and research with the consumer that that the the way we were showing up isn't where we want to go. So, but I'm ultimately just really excited about where we're going. Wow, there's a lot there. I mean, the uh, I was going to bring up brand trust, but as you had mentioned, you know, not shying away from the dermatologist side of things maintains that trust, but then allows you to tap into the influencer market that is so crucial for now. So I, I can't wait to see how this campaign uh, plays out for the, yeah. for the rebrand that you guys have going on. The, the last question I have is of course regarding AI and, and data. And so the, I'd love to understand when you think about campaigns concluding, right? Measuring the success of them and understanding, you know, what were the, the best takeaways from that and how to apply it. And then you also think about AI and, and the implications of what that could do to authenticity of the brand. Is there an element of AI that Galderma is looking at for, let's say for example, this rebrand and, and, and how to pursue it or maybe in the post results from it? How how is that, you know, sort of playing out in the organization? Yeah, I would say, so that's a two-part question there. So on the AI side, yeah. before I had arrived at Galderma, we had created an AI tool okay. that, that would assess your, your skin and give you customized oh, wow. recommendations using genuine, genuine derm, derm recommendations on the back end. And so very, very cool, very advanced. So you're going to begin to see us talk about that app. Oh. Okay. and that technology more. That said, AI is evolving, yeah. right? And so, so, and so where we're at now is getting the basics right and very closely aligning ourselves to, to technology developers that are, that are close to AI, developing AI. We don't want to be behind. 
we want to be in front. Right. But I also don't believe in partnering with technology, acquiring technology, just that will just end up being an expensive, fancy press headline. Yeah. I, I don't need that. What, right. what I need is for consumers to love us and to walk into a Walmart or a Target and say, oh, I love Cetaphil. That, you know, that's what I want. And then I want AI to, to amplify that when relevant. Marketing is an art and a science at the same time. I believe strongly in having that instinct. I don't, I don't know about you. I always have this feeling in my stomach, like I know when something's a big idea. And and that's that's one of the things, that's one of the, my favorite things about this job, I think. But yes, yes. That said, you need the data. To, to reinforce and validate the idea that you or your team has. And so, for example, last week, the NFL had a piece of social content that went viral. Okay. Their social media manager punked several of their players by asking them funny questions. And one of the questions that they had asked Xavier Leggett, um, the, the player, was, was uh, tell me your skincare routine. And, it, and it, Xavier responds and says, I use C to cleanser followed by the seed of a lotion as well nice. and it's so genuine yeah, you just it's it so on. genuine yeah. and the commentary was incredible from give Xavier a podcast to <laughs> get this man a seed deal and so so I messaged my team immediately yeah. even one step before that I found out about it it went so viral that our head of business in the EU heard about it Wow so Frank that is Frank yeah. who was based in Germany messaged me and said hey Hey, I've seen have this. you seen this? Yeah. I hadn't. I hadn't seen it yet, candidly, That's right? At the time. Yeah. It's crazy. And so I messaged my team in Dallas immediately, and I said, "We've messaged him, right? Like, do you see the comment that was upvoted the most at the time? It has seventy-five thousand likes. Was get this man a seat felt deal? Wow. So again, that's that's data, right? That seventy-five thousand people saw this Very and were cool. engaged and cheering it on, which tells me we're on. We have an opportunity. Right. So I so I told the team very quickly. They were like, yeah, it's yeah, it's great. We're gifting him. I said, no, DM him right now directly from the account, and and he responded very quickly within 10 to 15 minutes. And he's now going to be a part of our men's campaign that's going live today. That's and that, amazing. To be clear, that was a week ago. <laughs> That's moving fast. That's, that's what, moving that's what super you have fast. to do in this environment. That's yeah. crazy cool. Yeah. And what we talked about on stage a few minutes ago largely was our Super Bowl campaign. And it started with that. I had been in the role for two weeks when I saw I saw it trending on X, the announcement that the teams had been announced for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And my method of operating is, okay, what's happening in culture? And then insert yourself into that conversation, right? Yeah. So be relevant that way. So I saw that. I called a brainstorm and I said, okay. What do we? What viral bet do we want to make? Is it three social posts? Do we want to make a video? And and we what happened was over ten. This is ten days before okay. the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. We we that was the brainstorm was on Thursday. We aligned on a concept by two on Tuesday. We shot no our way. viral video, and we loved it so much by Wednesday that we could only buy media in Dallas. <laughs> so that was super cool. Yeah. But we released it on. Thursday, and it was the number four trending topic on X. Wow. And it created, I mean, we had over six billion impressions in three days. I can't believe you guys moved that fast. That's incredible. Yeah, it's but the, it's exhilarating yeah, for to, a marketer. To do that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yes. It's like a dream come true. Yes. But it's so fun. And also, it proves to the world and to other brands that you can do it too. Yeah. You can right? do things quick. Like, it doesn't need to be six months in advance. You know, no, you and an we're not a young brand. Yeah. Like, We've been around 76 years, oh my goodness. and and all it takes is one idea, and it doesn't need to come from an executive. It can come from anybody on the team, and I really believe as a leader that anyone can have a voice, and you're going to see a lot more of this from Okay, us. all right. I'm, I'm excited. Well, thank you so much Good. for the time. It's been a real pleasure. Um, hope to see you around. Thank you.